Toyota production system is also an application of the flow concept, but the assumptions of this Toyota production system have to be understood and clearly verbalized for one to not face any disappointments when transplanting. Toyota production system, like any other application, makes three fundamental or basic assumptions. And these assumptions, if missed, can lead you to a result not as effective as Toyota. The first assumption that the Toyota production system makes is about stability. Stability in its environment. In fact, it makes three assumptions about the stability of three aspects of its environment. The first aspect of stability is products and processes are stable relatively over a period of time. Anyone implementing Kanban knows that it takes time to implement Kanban and the number of disruptions to flow are huge. And further to this, as the inventory levels start reaching the target of low inventory, the sensitivity to disruption goes up or the Kanban system starts becoming very sensitive to disruption. We are all aware that the inventory is nothing but a cushion against disruptions. And in Kanban system, this is what we are trying to reduce. So Kanban system becomes more sensitive to disruptions as the inventory levels go down. And if we have to then stabilize the input, one can imagine the time and effort required at, for doing such a thing, which also means that during this time that you are implementing the Kanban system, your products and processes should not change significantly. Now Toyota as a car company or car industry in whole has relatively stable product and processes, maximum a model year, that means one change of model in a year and that too a majority of the components required in the new model remain same. So the product and processes can be taken as stable over a fairly large period of time. This is one aspect of the stability assumption that the Toyota production system makes. The second aspect. The second aspect is the demand of individual product. However, the electronics industry does not face the luxury of this longer demand for the product. Usually, six to seven months is the demand period for electronics product. And a model change happens. So Toyota production systems assumption of a long run of product and processes becomes invalid in electronics industry to a certain level. There are other industries as well where the product may change much faster and significantly over a much short, shorter period of demand than that faced by the car industry. The second aspect of the stability requirement of the Toyota production system is concerned with the demand of a product over a period of time. 
if the demand of a product is sporadic, that means if the product is sold once in a quarter, it is relatively instable demand and the Kanban system finds it tough to handle. In normal production systems, this item whose lead time, let's assume, is two weeks and you get an order for this once in a quarter will be seen on the shop floor for two weeks. This inventory will lie on the shop floor for two weeks and then after this demand is satisfied, there is zero inventory lying on the shop floor. So this inventory on the shop floor lies for the period or the duration of its lead time to manufacture. However, under the Kanban system, there are supposed to be containers lying with the components of this particular product on the shop floor. So if a company, let's assume has 5,000 or 10,000 products which have sporadic demand, the amount of inventory lying on the shop floor will be huge. This is what we experience when many people say that there has to be something to pull. If you are working on a pull system, then we have to have something to pull. And if there is nothing, no component available for that component, for that machine or for that product to be made, naturally, what are you going to pull? So Kanban system assumes or forces you to maintain inventory of components of the product on the shop floor. Now naturally, you will keep that inventory on the shop floor only when you know there is a demand or there is a regular demand. And if there is no regular demand and the number of products are huge, you will land up carrying a huge amount of inventory on the shop floor in or under a Kanban system. Now, Toyota had this ability to work around and create demand in such a way that most of their products have a bit fluctuating demand but not such huge fluctuations to cause only sporadic sales of certain products. However, there are a lot of industries or rather majority of the industries who will face sporadic demands and they have the raw material to make them. So there is a demand and that demand can be satisfied. The third aspect of the stability of the environment that Toyota production system assumes is the load coming on the various resources due to the mix of product in the demand during a period. That means if there are 10 products and they have various demands. To manufacture these products, the load coming on various of its production resources should be stable, only allowed to vary in a very narrow range. If the product mix changes dramatically, the load changes dramatically and that would lead to a loss of sale. Just imagine a, a week of demand where the capacity is underutilized and then there is a next week of demand where the capacity is less than what is required to produce. The Kanban system which does not allow you to produce before time would force you to miss the due dates 
in the next week because next week you don't have the capacity to produce. Toyota developed a way of making sure that such fluctuations do not happen. In fact, they developed a product mix and that product mix was not allowed to change dramatically from month to month. So they worked hard on controlling the product mix or the demand mix, but not all the companies have got the ability to influence the product mix. Now, all the three aspects, if missing, will make implementation of Toyota production system practically not beneficial. We all know that the three stability aspects of the Toyota production system is experienced at least in one number by most of the companies. And just imagine if a company experiences all three of them. For such a company, TPS may not yield the desired results and the productivity levels or the benefits that Toyota has derived may not be achieved. It is also important to note that all these aspects of stability are outside the control of production. They are decided by how a company decides to design and sell its product in the market. Most of the people suffer with one or the other instability aspects. But talking about this instability, it does not mean that lean, if not been able to implement in totality, is not effective enough. There are so many aspects of lean manufacturing which when implemented are extremely beneficial. Setup time saving techniques, the U cell that allow you to flow material through the constant increase or focus on productive time or the, or the total productive maintenance aspect, they are extremely beneficial. But most of these techniques which Toyota production system has evolved or developed get implemented in companies from the point of view of cost saving. So if you are implementing these techniques in your company for cost saving benefits, it does not actually qualify to be implementing lean. To implement lean, one has to focus on flow. Ford and Ono demonstrated to us the great benefits of flow. That means reduce lead times and how effective results were gained but they demonstrated this in relatively stable environments. What about the impact of flow on relatively unstable environments? The first aspect of instability is the product life cycle is small. That means the product and the process changes very quickly. The first aspect of instability in an environment is due to the product life cycle. When product life cycles are small, overproduction leads 
to obsolescence. Secondly, if the lead time to manufacture is huge, then there is missed demand. For example, if the product life cycle is six months and your lead time to manufacture is two months, you have lost sales. Lost sales not because you did not produce, but the demand did not exist by the time you produced. So if the product life cycle is small, increase in flow has a significant effect on performance.